Android used to stand for openness and choice. The reason so many people picked Android over Apple was freedom. You could install what you wanted. You could modify the system. You weren't locked into one company's store or one company's vision. But today, Google is slowly dismantling that openness. They're turning Android into a walled garden, just like Apple's iOS. They're restricting sideloading, they're locking down app stores, and they're even moving Android's own development behind closed doors. This isn't just bad for privacy, it's a threat to the entire future of Android. I'm Chief Geek 3D, or Chief Geeked. If you care about cybersecurity, privacy, and tech freedom, stick with me and follow me on all my socials, because this is where Android is headed, and why alternatives like Graphene OS are becoming more important than ever, even though their development might be slowing down due to Google's actions. Let's start with Google's new sideloading restrictions. Beginning in 2026, Android users in Brazil, Indonesia, Singapore, and Thailand won't be able to install apps from unverified developers. By 2027, this rolls out globally. And what does unverified mean? It means developers now have to give Google their full identity legal name, address, phone number, and in many cases, a government ID. Without that verification, their app simply won't install outside of the Play Store. Google says this is about security, and sure, malware is a real problem. Sideloaded apps more likely to contain malicious code. But the fix isn't about empowering you, the user. It's about giving Google more power. Instead of letting you decide what risks you're willing to take, Google inserts itself as the gatekeeper, and slowly but surely sideloading stops be being an escape hatch for alternatives. Think about the apps that rely on sideloading. Alternative app stores like F-Droid, privacy tools that can't live in the Play Store because they bypass Google's own services. In games like Fortnite, which bypass the Play Store to avoid Google's massive 30% cut. Under these new rules, every single one of those developers has to register with Google, hand over their personal info, and essentially ask permission to exist outside the Play Store. That's not openness. That is control. And if this feels familiar, it should. This is exactly how Apple runs iOS. Apple has spent years fighting against sideloading, in Europe, where regulators forced them to allow some alternatives. Google is taking a softer approach, but the result ends up being the same. A walled garden with a single gate and the gatekeeper being Google. But sideloading is just one piece of the puzzle. The bigger change is happening quietly inside Android itself. For years, the Android Open Source Project, or AOSP, was developed in public. Anyone could watch the commits some uh, come in, track changes, and prepare for what was coming in the next version. Security researchers could spot problems early. Custom ROM developers could start building and adapting before release. It was open. It was transparent. Now, Google has closed that door. Major components like art, the Android runtime, Bluetooth stacks, the SE Linux policy, even the virtualization framework are now being developed privately inside Google. The public no longer sees these changes as they happen. We only get the finished code dump after everything is finalized. Why does that matter? Because without early visibility, custom ROMs like Lineage OS, Calyx OS, and Graphene OS are stuck waiting. They don't see the changes until it's too late to prepare. Instead of building alongside Google, they're forced to play catch up. And for privacy focused projects, that lag could mean weeks or months of delay before critical security updates are integrated. This also weakens trust. When code is developed in the open, researchers can spot vulnerabilities or catch design flaws before they ship. With closed development, fewer eyes see the changes. Thus, Linus Law, if you're familiar with that. And when fewer eyes see the code, bugs and exploits are more likely to slip through. The irony here is staggering. Courts in the U.S. have already ruled that Google's Play Store is an illegal monopoly. A federal judge ordered Google to open Android to competition. And what is Google doing instead? Doubling down, closing the doors, consolidating even more power. And this is why I've never bought into the idea of Google as some kind of benevolent steward of open source. People point at Android being open, or Chrome being based on Chromium, and say Google is a champion of free software. 
but let's be honest, Google's business model has never been about empowering users. It's about collecting data, building profiles, and selling tar targeted ads, even here on YouTube. Open source for Google has always been a means to an end. Android was open because it let manufacturers flood the market with cheap phones that carried Google's apps and services. Chrome was open because it let Google dominate the web, and now Chromium powers nearly every major browser. But being open never meant being user first to them. It meant getting more people into Google's ecosystem. That's why I don't use Chrome, I use Firefox, because Firefox isn't built on surveillance capitalism. Mozilla isn't fer perfect, but their funding doesn't depend on turning your personal data into a revenue stream. You can disable a lot of those features, and that's a huge difference. Editing chief here, so I know some people are gonna be bringing up the privacy policy issue with Mozilla Firefox that was honestly blown way out of proportion, and I have a prior video talking about this that I'm not going to really get into this issue much here, but you can go watch that prior video, and I will make sure to try to have links for all of you to read that in the description, and if I can, have a card up above to the video. And this all connects directly to why Google is now killing off ad blockers. With Manifest V3, Google is essentially crippling extensions that block ads. And the reason is obvious. Blocking ads doesn't just block annoying banners. It blocks the data collection behind them. It blocks the trackers, the pixels, and the scripts that fuel Google's advertising empire. So of course they want to weaken ad blockers. Just like, of course, they want to kill off alternative Android projects like Graphene, Calyx, Lineage, and EOS, amongst others. Because every one of those projects reduces Google's visibility into your life. Every one of those projects takes away data points that Google could be monetizing. And that's the one thing Google can't tolerate. And honestly, none of this feels new. It eerily reminds me of Microsoft's old Embrace Extend Extinguish strategy from the 90s. Back then, Microsoft would embrace open standards, extend them in ways that only they controlled, and eventually extinguish competition. It's the exact playbook that landed Microsoft in antitrust lawsuits with the Department of Justice. And it's the same storm that ultimately pushed Bill Gates out of his own company. These are the tactics that have always made me wary of Google and Microsoft, because on the service, they make it look like they're supporting open source, but Microsoft now owns GitHub. Google built Android on top of Linux, both frame themselves as benevolent tech giants lending a hand to the open source community. But if you look closer, it's not altruism, it's control. Microsoft's GitHub acquisition pulls the world's largest open source hub into their ecosystem. Google's shift away from AOSP transparency does the same thing. What looks like helping is really absorbing, enclosing, and eventually directing the entire future of the project. And now Google is doing to Android what Microsoft once tried to do to the web. Embrace, extend, extinguish, just wrapped in a shinier, open source package. This is why alternatives matter more than ever. That is why I use Graphene OS. That is, uh, it's a security hardened, uh, custom ROM, privacy focused Android fork that's built in the open. It gives you permission controls that stock Android doesn't. You can revoke network access from any app. It ships with Vanadium, a hardened browser and web view. You get sandboxed Google Play, completely optional and isolated from your system. And most importantly, Graphene OS is public, transparent and user first. No corporate lock-in, no hidden code branches, no walled garden. Graphene is, uh, OS is proof that Android can be private, secure and free as in freedom as well as in cost. But make no mistake, Google's changes are going to make life harder for projects like this. Every move towards closed development makes adaptation slower. Every new restriction on sideloading is another lever Google could use to shut out alternatives entirely. And here's the scary part. Google isn't testing this in the US or Europe first. They're starting in countries like Brazil, Indonesia, Singapore, and Thailand. Why? because these are massive growth markets where regulation is weaker. Once the model is established there, it's easy to push worldwide. By the time regulators catch up, the damage will already be done. So here's the bottom line. Google is Apple-fying Android. They want to lock you into their store, their rules, their ecosystem, their data tracking. And if we don't push back now, Android becomes just another iOS with a different logo. If you care about choice, 
privacy, and freedom, this is the time to speak up. Support Graphene OS, support F-Droid, support alternatives that keep Android diverse and open. Because once that freedom is gone, it won't be coming back. If you found this breakdown helpful, hit like, share the video, and subscribe for more deep dives into privacy and tech, and don't forget to follow me on all of my socials. All my links are in the description. Stay safe, stay private, and happy hacking.